And while we're talking about liberty and the EU here on the 70th weekly show from Radio Free UK, the next item should be a real treat for many of you. It's an item from Vernon Coleman's blog. Now, Vernon Coleman's CV is far too long for me to do justice to right here, but in summary, he's written over 100 books, which have sold in more than 50 countries, and have been translated into 24 languages. Over 2 million copies of his novels and non-fiction have been sold in the UK alone. His stories, articles and columns have appeared in hundreds of leading publications around the world. Vernon Coleman has a medical degree and worked as a doctor in general practice before becoming a full-time writer. His politics are distinctly libertarian and he's been a long-time opponent of the EU. And this is a new item from his blog about the health implications of living in an overcrowded country. And it's read by myself. From Vernon Coleman's blog. England is the most overcrowded country in the EU. The Proof. By Dr Vernon Coleman, MB, CHB, DSC, FRSA. Read by Paul Perrin. If you've travelled to France, Germany, Spain or Italy recently, then you'll doubtless have noticed that most places seem less crowded than England. Roads are nowhere near as busy and traffic jams and hold-ups are far less of a problem. There's more countryside. And in the towns and cities, parks, playing fields and other open spaces seem to have survived. As a whole, the figures show that the United Kingdom is one of the most crowded countries in Europe. Only tiny countries such as Monaco, Gibraltar and the Vatican have more people packed into each square mile of land than Britain does. And to be honest, they don't really count as proper independent countries. Monaco is part of France, Gibraltar is part of the United Kingdom and the Vatican is part of Italy. Compared to France, Germany, Spain and Italy, the United Kingdom is definitely packed and overcrowded. But the available figures are misleading. Within the United Kingdom, there are huge differences between the number of people packed into England and the number living in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And the figures show clearly that England is massively overcrowded, to the point where overcrowding is undoubtedly causing massive amounts of stress and serious chronic illness. The United Kingdom has a population density per square kilometre of 262.84 people. But if you divide that into the four separate countries which make up the UK, then the results are startling. Wales has a population density of 144 people per square kilometre, Scotland of 62, and Northern Ireland has a population density of 127 individuals per square kilometre. But England, which seems to be where all the immigrants want to settle, has a population density of 406 people per square kilometre. These figures include only the individuals who are officially registered as living in England. If illegal immigrants are included, and there are almost certainly more illegal immigrants in England than anywhere else in Europe, then the overcrowding becomes even more intense. And this makes England vastly overcrowded. Just look at the other EU countries. Germany has 231 people per square kilometre. France has 117. Spain, 93. Romania has 118 people per square kilometre. And Poland has 90. Portugal, 115. Italy, 202. And so it goes on throughout Europe. There is no country anywhere other than the anomalies such as the tiny Principality of Monaco, which is as crowded as England. It is clear from these figures that England should close its doors now. There is no room. It is not surprising that roads are so overcrowded and there are constant traffic jams. The average speed on English motorways is now around 40 miles an hour. That is less than the speed at which cars travel before the first motorways were opened. In some parts of the country, such as the M25, the average speed of travel is under 30 miles an hour because the number of people crammed into one very tiny small island. Overcrowding doesn't just mean our roads are absurdly busy. It doesn't just mean that our hospitals and schools can't cope. It doesn't just mean that we are, as a nation, heading for penury and eventually certain bankruptcy. This overcrowding is also making us ill. In my book, Stress Control, first published in 1978, I pointed out that studies done on human beings have shown that crime rates, mental disease and incidence of heart attacks and strokes and the incidence of infective disease all rise when overcrowding gets worse. People who live in overcrowded circumstances lose their sense of personal identity, develop a tendency to accept wrongs and injustices passively, without protest and, curiously, suffer from loneliness. In overcrowded situations, Differences and problems which might otherwise be tolerated become unbearable. 
Overcrowding causes people to become aggressive and increases criminal behaviour. Finally, overcrowding means that people are more likely to develop high blood pressure and more likely to have heart problems. England is so overcrowded that the English are being made mentally and physically ill by excessive immigration. Every time another plane load, boat load or train load of immigrants arrives in England, the pressure increases. The newcomers will suffer just as much as the residents. The evidence shows clearly that immigration must stop now. This is not a question of politics or racism, it's a question of good health and of survival. For the sake of those arriving and those already here, we must call a halt to all immigration to England. If the United Kingdom must take more immigrants, then they should go directly to Scotland, which is underpopulated, and there they must stay.